I like to find rather than sisters, I like to find everybody coming on from uh, the Mayday for tonight, uh, a night for the workers and for the common people. Uh, I'd like to thank the levelers for putting this group under the miscarriages of justice organisation. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, I'm going to let somebody else talk about that. Somebody knows uh, a lot more about it than me. Because I'm one of the lucky ones. Uh, I'm one, uh, one for the grace of God go I. Uh, they never picked me up and framed me. So I'm going to uh, actually put your hands together in Milton, Paddy Hill, or at the stage. Cheers. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Howard. My name is Paddy Joe Hill and I'm one of, I'm one of the men that's more company known as the Birmingham Six. In 1974, I was just like all of you. I was a happy-go-lucky guy, married, six kids. Yeah, and I tell everybody I'm Irish and I'm proud of it, but I am not a terrorist. <laughs> At the time of mine, when I went in, ladies and gentlemen, there was a lot of myths about the Birmingham Six, about us being arrested trying to flee the country. That's the biggest load of bullshit you'll ever hear in your life. I went to the police station of my own free will to be eliminated from their inquiries. I give them a detailed statement and the Special Branch Headquarters and the Special Forces of Northern Ireland told them to release me. The reason being, my father spent 30 years in the British Army. I had a brother in the British Army all the years that I was in prison. He worked with Special Forces at home. I had another young brother served 12 years in the 2nd Battalion of the Paris and I had another young brother who had just gone into the British Army nine months before the Birmingham pub bombings. I was well known to the police, ladies and gentlemen. I wasn't a good guy. I had a number of previous convictions. When I came over here, I realised all the discrimination, etc. And I was involved in gang fights. That was my problem. Gang fights, stealing motorbikes, etc. All the rest of it in the 60s. I packed it all up. 1974, I went to a police station. I walked up two flights of steps and I never realised those were the last steps of freedom I was to take for 16 and a half years. I never realised how rotten, evil, corrupt and fucking perverted the system in this country really is. During the years that I was in prison, when I first went into prison in 1974, the prison population was somewhere in the region of 26, 27,000. When I came out 16 and a half years later, it was approximately 39,000. That was 11 years ago. During the years that I was in prison, I met lots of other guys who claimed they were innocent. We used to compare notes, and I was, over the years, I met more and more and more people that were coming in. And let me tell you, the prison population today is over 70,000. It has jumped by 75% in 10 fucking years. At the present moment, they have 17 more prisons that are on the bill. They're going into private hands, and the only thing they need to keep them going is the revolving door system. Pick them up, send them in, take them out. Pick them up, send them in. And this is exactly what they're doing. They're taking away so many rights. When I got released, the Home Secretary said an hour before my release that he was going to set up the Royal Commission for the second time in British judicial history. They came back and recommended a couple of years later that the cornerstone to the British judicial system was the right to silence. What happens? The following year they took it off you. They took away jury service, they taken away everything. You can't gather in the crowd, you can't do this, you can't do that. They talk about young kids taking drugs. Let me tell you something, there's 22 bars in the House of Commons and they spend about £10 million a year on cop price drinks so all them assholes can sit up there pissed out of their heads. They haven't got a fucking clue what's going on down here on the streets. They've taken all the rest so many of our rights. And ladies and gentlemen, they intend to put more and more people in prison in this country. And the only thing you can remember is this. If you don't get up off your asses now and do something about it, you're never going to be able to do something about it. Look at every professional body in the country. Every one of them, the police, the medical profession, the legal profession, the judges, 
They've all got their own built-in internal investigation squads. Not one of them is held accountable. Of all the thousands of us have come out of prison in the last 10, 12 years, not one police officer has gone to court and stood trial. Not fucking one. They all retire on what they call stress and strain, 80% inflation-proof inflation -proof pensions, and then they tell you, crime doesn't pay. It does if you're a crooked fucking cop, believe me, it pays well. And that's what happens in this country. Even the medical profession, when they go wrong, they get uh, award themselves money. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. Tonight when you leave here, you're going to leave with the greatest gift that you're ever going to be given in your life. It's the gift of freedom. Treasure it, because you never know when it's going to be taken away from you. I hope and pray to God that I never ever have to go out and campaign on the streets for any of you, your family or friends. Ladies and gentlemen, I too like to take this opportunity to thank the management and of course the laborers for putting all this gate for us. And remember, enjoy the night. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what you've all been waiting for. The laborers! <laughs>